Yes, we welcome back to another video on the Big Steph channel, and it's official. I think the time has officially come for everyone to say, Greg Berhalter must go as the men's national team coach. And here's the review of the Uruguay versus United States men's national team final Copa America game. And I'll be here to break that down for you next. I'm really in my zone. All my niggas getting cheese like it's provolone. They ain't with us out the bar, no son, they'll never know. Even through trial and error, gotta keep yourself composed. Feel like me, no bitch, I'm chasing all my dreams. I like I said, people, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers every single day. You see men's national team content as well as Arsenal content on this channel. And even though the Copa America is over for the US, don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and still follow the channel for any more updates and any more news around the team and any more footballing news in general. And yeah, let's get straight into the video. So first of all, the United States are now officially out of Copa America 2024 as the host nation falling out of the group stage. It's a tough one to take, a bitter pill to take because... If you've been following me on this journey covering the Copa America for the United States, I had us labeled as a dark horse. And you can't be labeled as a dark horse if you don't even make it out of the group. There's a lot of factors that, that came into um, play in this one, especially in the group. Let's touch on the Uruguay game specifically. So we come out early in the game. It looks like we're battling. It looks like we're battling, honestly. But once Uruguay decided to, to step up 10, 15 yards, bring their back line up, get their midfielders on it and really start to impose themselves. I thought the frailties of the United States national team's tactics came out once again. Now, I know early in the game, we decided to bypass the midfield and bypass that press and go along to Balogun. Balogun, again, I predicted he was going to be the key man for us. Balogun, for the 40 minutes, 41 minutes he played, was absolutely outstanding. And when he came off, you saw instantly how much of a threat we lose. The way he's able to hold up the ball, like I said, run the channels willingly and physically such a good presence to have up top and he can take his chances didn't really get any chances like yesterday but we lost so much when Balogun went off the went off the field yesterday it was it was crushing to say the least but the referee in this game was absolutely shocking first half i thought some of his decisions were woeful first of all the playing trying to give Chris Richards a yellow card, then talking about play on. First of all, he blows a whistle, gives a yellow card, and then says play on when Uruguay take a free quick free kick. What level of football is this? Then Tyler Adams gets stamped on the ankle and he gets a yellow card. And then we have a counter attack. The, the ball hits the player's hands. We get the ball, we transition, and then he calls it back for a free kick. And then the offside goal. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. I don't want to come and make this about the referee only. But that referee yesterday was absolutely shocking. Shocking. But put all of that aside, we still deserve to go. I'll, I'll hold my hands up and say we deserve to go. And in reading your guys' comments over these last couple of videos I've been putting out, I have to agree with most of you guys. Burhalter has to go. He has to go. If you look at the Panama game, the way we were able to throw away a one lead, even though we were down to 10 men, yes, the players fought valiantly in these last two games. But ultimately, it's a results business. You, be, you at least needed to come up with a draw against Panama. You lose that game. And then you make a game against a very good Uruguay team who are composed, who are compact, who are very well organized. It was always going to be a tough game. It was always going to be a game you were probably going to lose anyway. But for Greg Berhalter, in the middle of a set piece, in the middle of a defensive set piece, to try to give information about a game the United States has no control over, Makes no sense to me. Absolutely no sense. Why are you telling players it's 1 1 in another game when they're in the middle of defending a set piece? How, how can we affect the game? We must go out there and win regardless. Don't put it into their players' mentalities that, oh, a draw might be good enough. Because ultimately, Panama came back and beat Bolivia. So you're telling them that didn't even make sense. It was irrelevant. Irrelevant information and just at the basic levels of football. So, so for anyone who doesn't know, or anyone that might not know, that is probably one of the most cardinal sins you can do as a manager in football. At one of the biggest cardinal sins, making substitutions during set pieces and giving in misinformation and throwing off the concentration of players during a set piece for foolishness. For foolishness. Because one ball like this and everyone could switch off. Now, I'm not saying it could have been called off or offside, but 
Those are fine margins in football. He, he probably was offside, but who cares? Ultimately, at ultimately throughout the whole game yesterday against Uruguay, we created nothing. Absolutely nothing. The midfield was flat. Weston and Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, couldn't progress the ball through the lines. You have Gio Reyna out wide, who was a threat in the first half when he got the ability to be on it. Pulisic kept coming inside, which left exposed on the right-hand side to Oliveira and to Vina, who was bombing down their left-hand side and killing our right-hand side and killing Joe Scali, who defended well, I think. But tactically, it didn't make no sense. None of it made sense. None of it. I said in my preview, bring Cardoso into the team, someone who's going to be composed on the ball, someone who's going to be willing to take it in midfield, have confidence and play out wide and allow our wingers to press further up the field. Something you saw with Uruguay. And you have players like Ugarte, who I thought played brilliantly yesterday, as well as uh, Nandez and Benton Cor when they all came in. All of their midfielders, Valverde, especially when he got time to pick his passes, they were all quality. And that's what won them the game. We couldn't win the midfield battle. And when they decided to take 10, 10 steps forward in um to, to step up the pitch, you saw that USA had no, could, couldn't do nothing. Yes, all that pressure we put on early, it looked good. It, it looked good. But I think that's a lot of the reason because Uruguay were playing very pragmatic. And I made and I was on a watch along last night with um Yudi from Loadmouth Football. And we were talking. And he kept pointing out to me how they're bombing down that side and how we're, we're not able to get control of the midfield. And it's, and it's really because we were trying to bypass it all of yesterday, even the subs. Yes, you bring on a striker. You bring on Josh Sargent. Yes, you bring on Haji Wright. But what was the plan from there? What was the plan from there? Where was Brendan Aronson? Where was Cardoso? Where was the idea to change up stylistically? Where, where was it? Where was it? And, it not, and I don't want to blame too much on the players because I thought the players fought valiantly. But at the same time, are these players what we think they are? Because even though they play at the top level football, and I said this already on the channel, and I told this to my brother, even though they're playing at the highest levels of football, there's certain things we're asking of these players that they have not shown. For example, we don't have a midfielder in our team right now that's going to be able to break down low blocks. We don't have that midfielder in our, in, in our ranks. We don't. We don't have another threat, wing threat, really showing quality on a consistent basis other than Christian Pulisic. And the one guy we do have possibly could bang in the goals once he gets a stretch of games. He gets knocked up in the first 40 minutes and he has to come off. And then from there, where's the depth? You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't want to blame it on the players because this is a very tough Uruguay side who don't give away chances much and who don't give away goals much either. But when you think about how void of ideas we were, how much void of any impetus, especially in that second half, when Uruguay decided to go for it and put the foot on the jugular, it was just so depleting to watch it was so depleting to watch and all that comes down to say i think greg berhalter must go i think it's his time has run its course whether we need a new voice in there whether we need a better tactician in there something must change something must change now, i'm not saying a new tactician is going to take us to become prime spain or prime germany or prime anything i'm saying this team has to do better getting grouped at the copa america and not making it out of that group is a under is a massive understatement that's it. we've underachieved massively underachieved massively for the talent we had and for the group we had we could have ended up in canada's group we probably got grouped in there as well not good enough not good enough in all aspects of the game whether that be man management whether that be preparing for certain games or whether that be tactical adjustments within these games were not good enough we're not good enough on a world level, still not yet. We need to, we need to see some changes in there. And I, and I agree with a lot that was being said last night. But the biggest cardinal sin for me has to be how, how we gave up that goal last night, honestly. Regardless of what we want to say about how poor the referee was, regardless of what we want to talk about, about Burhalter, Burhalter made the biggest cardinal sin I saw in his whole tenure last night. One of the biggest. And that was giving the information about a Panama game right before a set piece. I even heard Clint Dempsey talk about it um, after the game. Because I was doing a live stream and I said it to Yudi. Why is he doing that? Instantly, straight, they scored. And I heard Dempsey talk about it. So I knew I wasn't wrong. It's poor. It's poor. And as a manager who's been coaching for so long around the game, Greg Berhalter must and should have known better. Should have known better. But, bro, ultimately out of Copa America 2024. And it's another major tournament down the drain. Do can the United States progress and get better for the world cup in 2026 do we make changes coming up to that world cup i don't know i think massive change is needed
But let me know what you guys think down below. Is this the final game for Greg Berhalter? Was that Greg Berhalter's um, last game for the United States men's national team? And if so, how would you rank his tenure? I said it on my last video, but ultimately, how would you rank his tenure? I'm not swaying. I don't think a result versus Uruguay really changes me. But I just think a 7, out of, seven and a half out of 10, because we've won things and we've progressed slightly. But ultimately, as a manager, we've seen Greg Berhalter's frailties as a tactician, not good enough. And as probably just a footballing IQ on that play alone, just not good enough. Just not good enough. It could be all, it's all for effort and all for, and all for hope, but not good enough ultimately. So let me know what you guys think. Like I said in the comments down below, we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We're trying to push for that goal every single day we're on this channel. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Peace.